Hello, my name is Jeremy Barnes, and today I'm going to do a video about my favorite movies of 2022. So I'm going to start off first with my like top five favorite movies of the year. And some of these were on my list of my most anticipated from, from last year, like for 2022, obviously. Um, but some of them were like unexpected uh, finds that I watched and loved. Um, so number one on my list is the one with Nicolas Cage, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which is a semi, well, it's not really biographical, but it's, it's Nicolas Cage playing himself. So it's like a fictional version of his life. Um, and then something that is happening kind of in his present. But uh, it was a hilarious movie that I saw pretty early this year. Um, I think I saw it before it was officially released um, in theaters at like a screening. Um, I hadn't had the chance to watch it again yet, but that movie was like a complete surprise to me, like how, how good it was, how much I enjoyed it. Um, so I, I would rate that one a 10 out of 10, um, for what it was. Uh, so that one is, is my number one pick. Number two was another, uh, movie that was kind of a, like not on my radar. I think this one, I did hear about it before I watched it. Um, but I didn't really know exactly what it would be. Um, but it's The Northman, which was directed by the same director who did, uh, The Lighthouse. And I think something else that I've seen as well, but that's the one that's coming to mind right now. Um, I forgot the director's name, but that one was about a, like, it's, it was basically like the Viking era, and it was about a Viking who his family is wronged, and he kind of spends his whole life on a revenge quest to get revenge on the one that wronged him and his family. But there's some twists and turns in the movie that make it um, exciting to watch, and it was visually like amazing, um, a true spectacle, and uh, very action-packed as well. Um, so I, I loved everything about it. I think it was very real for the time period and the type of people that they were depicting in the movie. Um, and it was it was a, a cool story. And I liked how it kind of wrapped up. Um, that one I would also give a 10. So my top two are both 10s for me. There's nothing about them that I like didn't think worked or could have been better in any like real way. Um, so... I think they set out to do exactly what they ended up achieving. Uh, so that's why I gave them both 10s. The third one is a near 10. And this one was on my list of like movies that I was excited about. And it's The Batman. It was definitely the best superhero movie or comic book movie of the year. Um, and it did come from DC, which usually is on the other side of things. I'm making not so good movies. But so far, they're movies that they've made outside of their main movie universe have been way better than the other ones and that's the batman and previously the joker or just joker and i'm excited for that sequel too but it's not next year it's going to be i think in 2024 but um the only thing about the batman that that dropped it down from a perfect 10 for me was like the ending i think it could have been a little bit better of an ending just like the way exactly that it wrapped up um, but you can see my review for that if you want to know more details. That one I gave a 9.8. And then after that is another comic book movie that I was already super excited about. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. We got my boy here, T'Challa. Rest in peace to the character and rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman, the actor. Um, I think the movie did a, a fantastic job honoring the actor Chadwick Boseman and finding a way to move the story on without the character of T'Challa um, and if you want to see my thoughts on that as well you can check that review out which will be up pretty recently bef before this video goes live um, that one I gave a 9 out of 10 and when I first watched it I thought it was possibly even better than the Batman 
But after thinking about it, I think there's a bit more problems with it than the Batman had. So that's why the Batman is still above it. And then my number five on my top five is uh, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, which came out briefly in theaters during the Thanksgiving holiday season. Um, but then now it, it came out on Netflix uh, around Christmas time. And this is when I watched it. I wanted to have seen it in theaters, but I didn't get a chance to. Um, so I watched it now on Netflix, but I was fine with that. Um, it was still a, a, a great experience watching it like that. It might have been better in the, in the theater, like most movies are, but I don't think it was a necessary theater experience. Um, but it was just as like engaging as the first one and actually, I think, more funny uh, for me. Um, I do think I prefer the first one still slightly um, just because I think I like the varying characters in the first one compared to this one where everybody was kind of in the same boat both literally and figuratively in this movie but uh i think the way that that it was structured was kind of the the surprising thing about it or the cool or unique thing about it um but the the, the like actual killer was not really a surprise um so it was it was basically a fun movie. That's my best way to describe it, and that was also a nine. All all of my like top movies were were nines. Um, I have one more that dropped down from my top five because of Knives Out, two, and that was uh, Top Gun Maverick. And before seeing that movie, I had never seen the original Top Gun, but I did watch it before seeing Top Gun Maverick. Um, and this one, I actually do prefer the sequel over the original, but I did like both. Um, this one was more action-packed, and and just like the way that it was shot was like super exhilarating. And um, Tom Cruise, as always, is just like an absolute joy to watch. Um, he's got a, a real infectious smile. And the new characters were also really cool as well. Like, um, I think his name is Scott Glenn, the actor. And he, he's, he's also in that movie with um, Jonathan Majors that just came out, the war movie. Uh, I want to check that one out. I didn't get a chance to, but uh, that one also looks pretty good. Um, so those are my top six, technically. And then now I'm going to tell you um, all the rest of the movies that were on my most anticipated list at the beginning of the year and what I ranked those now that I've watched them all. Uh, so the next one would be Lightyear, the Buzz Lightyear movie about the real Buzz Lightyear that the toy was based on in the actual Pixar universe. And that one was an 8.5 for me. Um, I did enjoy it quite a bit but um, not as much as I was hoping to. And that's kind of a, a common thread through all of, all of these movies that I'm going to mention from here on out on this list. Uh, the next one is the most recent one, the last movie that I watched in 2022, and it's Avatar The Way of Water. While I did enjoy it, I did not enjoy it as much as I was hoping to and as much as I did the first movie, which is actually one of my favorite movies like ever. Um, I will say, obviously, the technology is better in this movie compared to the first one, but somehow I actually prefer the visuals of the first movie over this one. I think there's just more colors in it. Um, I think one major difference is that the first movie, you see mostly kind of things at night, um, but this one is kind of more focused in the daytime. And I guess I just like the nighttime aesthetic of Pandora more than the daytime. Um, and I also prefer the jungle environment over the like aquatic environment. Um, but I'm kind of biased. Like I've always been a Tarzan fan since I was a kid. Um, so that kind of probably plays into my opinions about that. Um, but also this movie was a little bit repetitive compared to the first one, um, which did kind of dropped down on some of the points for me with this one. Um, but overall, I'm still very invested in the in the world of Avatar and Pandora. So I am excited to see what they do 
with the next one and maybe a few. But for me personally, I don't think it needs to be five movies. I think, it, I think they could just end it with the trilogy. But maybe my mind will be changed after the next one. Uh, we'll see. But I will not be doing a review for this movie as I originally was planning. Because I just don't think there's enough for me to say about it. The next one on my list is um, an eight, which is the same as Avatar. I don't know if I said that. Uh, and it's Nope. Jordan Peele's movie, which also I was kind of expecting more from. But this one, I, even though I, I put it lower than Avatar, I actually was more kind of happy with what we got. But I don't know. I think Avatar, I, I, I put it higher just because I think because of my investment into the world. Um, but I think Nope was a kind of more solid movie as its own thing. Um, but it is probably my least favorite out of Jordan Peele's movies. My number one would be Us. And then two, Get Out. And then Nope. But um, I do like kind of the twist that they did with the alien in the movie. Um... And I'm excited to see it again. Like I, I, I bought his whole collection of movies, Jordan Peele, but I haven't seen Nope yet again since I've gotten it. Uh, so I am excited to check it out again and maybe discover some new things that I didn't notice the first time. Uh, but the next one on my list is also an eight. Pretty much like all of these ones after my top six are, are eights except for Lightyear, which was an 8.5. And the last one on my list, which I'll get to. Uh, but the next one is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. That one I was expecting a lot from it. And the trailers like really were hyping it up and were so good that when we actually saw the movie, it basically just gave us everything that we already saw in the trailers. So it didn't leave us with anything new. And I think that hugely uh, impacted my experience of it. Um, so I was super disappointed with what we actually got after seeing it more times i was kind of more accepting of what it was and i did appreciate it a little bit more than my initial experience watching it but um overall i still don't think it was as good as it could have been um and i hope they do more with scarlet wish in the future and um and the next doctor strange movie i hope is focused on Doctor Strange and is also better than this movie was. Even though I did prefer it over the original Doctor Strange. Um, but I think it was mostly just because I'm a big fan of Wanda, Scarlet Witch. So hopefully they can make another Doctor Strange movie focused on him that is like better than both of the previous ones. But next on my list is Scream. The Scream like kind of reboot slash sequel. Scream 5 that they released at the beginning of the year, which feels, feels like so long ago. Like, it doesn't even feel like it happened this year for me to me. But it was. And I did like it. Same thing, it's not one of my favorite Scream movies, but I liked it for what it was. And I liked the new cast uh, very much. Especially, like, one of my new favorite um, kind of up-and-coming actresses. Who was even bigger now that that show Wednesday came out. Uh, Jenna Ortega. Um... I think that movie actually might have been the first thing I saw with her, Scream. But I've seen her in a lot of things this year. She was in this other movie too, that was like about a school shooting and the aftermath of it. And that one was good. And then I also saw her in uh, X, which was like a horror movie, slasher. Um, and I have not watched Wednesday yet, but I also do plan on checking that out. And uh, I think she's going to be in something else, too, coming up. Oh, I, I guess just the next Scream movie. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's a bit of a horror icon now that she's been in many horror films. Uh, so, that one was really good, um, or pretty good. And then uh, the next one is Black Adam. The other DC movie that came out this year. There was supposed to be more. But because of DC being. 
dragged down by Warner Bros. as a studio. Um, had many delays. Black Adam, I think, was decent for what it was, but it was just decent. And that's kind of what I was expecting to get from it anyway. Um, I was excited about the post credit scene, which I will spoil here. Superman showed up for the first time since, I believe, 2017. Uh, like, officially, um, even though he was in Zack Snyder's Justice League, which came out, I think that was 2020, right? Um, and that was a really cool thing to see, but now that just, the rug got pulled out from under us, and that shit is not gonna happen, so it was pointless, and this is why I hate DC and Warner Bros, but hopefully now that it's under the control of, like, one person, or two people, in the case of James Gunn and Peter Safran, hopefully they're able to kind of keep things smooth sailing after they do their official reboot which will be, I think, after next year. Uh, it might kind of start next year, but I don't think the original like universe will be kind of over with until after next year because they still have a few movies coming out that will probably be before the reset that I'm expecting to see. Um, and I'll get into those movies um, in my most anticipated for next year. Um, but my, the last on my list uh, with a 75 is Thor, Love and Thunder, which at first I was not expecting a lot from, and then I was kind of hoping it would be pretty decent, but it didn't end up end up being better than Thor Ragnarok, which that one I do like, but not as much as a lot of people do. Um, so this one was just even worse for me. I still kind of enjoyed it overall. But there's a lot of stuff in it that I, I like did not like. And that's why it got a 7.5, which is not very good. And probably one of the worst, I think, projects that, that Marvel has released since Endgame. Um, so it is what it is. But that's my list of the movies that I've watched this year. From my favorite to least favorite. Thank you for watching. And I will catch you next time. Peace.